Hello everyone, Lord here. Welcome back to Shadowverse. Today we'll be taking a look towards the future and discussing the upcoming rebalance patch. In case you're not aware, Shadowverse has a very specific approach to rebalancing its card pool. On a specific date every month, usually towards the end of said month, there is a lengthy official post from Cygames letting us know if any cards will be receiving changes, as well as the reasoning behind said changes, or in some cases lack thereof. This typically includes data from the latter, tournament performances, and sometimes a more general note about the developer's thoughts on the card or a change in design direction. The following day, the appropriately dubbed rebalance patch is rolled out and the changes are implemented. So as you might have guessed, the next rebalance patch is coming up soon, April 24th and 25th to be exact, and there has been a lot of talk about what is going to be changed and how. Very recently, a new source I've mentioned before, Shadowverse Game with .jp, props to them by the way, posted a list collating popular community ideas. I found this list to be quite interesting and I feel that the changes proposed in it warrant some discussion. So in this video, we will examine some of these ideas and talk about the reasoning behind them, their viability and whether or not they are necessary. At the end, I will also give you my own personal shortlist of what archetypes and cards I feel are likely to be affected by the patch. With all that in mind, let's dive straight in. Fatal Spellbomb. Proposed change. Cost changed from 1 play point to 2 play points. Fatal Spellbomb is one of the cards that can be produced by Vol's Magical Marksman, a staple in the ever so popular mid-range sword deck. Considering that Vols himself is not particularly aggressively costed, it's only logical to target the most common reason for running him in the first place, and that is the ability to produce Fatal Spellbomb. I feel that the card does not require much explanation, it is extremely efficient, being reminiscent of staple removal cards like Black and Scripture, Big Knuckle Bodyguard, Priest of Kajo, and many others. While obviously lacking certain benefits in comparison, not requiring a large investment with its low play point cost, and not being dependent on an evolution point in order to impact the board are huge upsides. Having basically no drawback to being chosen since it will almost always find the target is just icing on the cake. So we've established that the card is strong and popular, but does it require a nerf? Well, Midrange Swordcraft is very much a tier 1 deck at the moment, so I think it goes without saying that some cards from the craft will receive an adjustment. I think whether Fatal Spellbomb is one of those cards depends strongly on how much of a shift Games wants to make. If higher rarity cards like Arthur or Sky Fortress are rebalanced, it may come to pass that Fatal Spellbomb remains as it is. That said, it is an excellent candidate for a more precise adjustment in power, so personally, I would say that this would be a good change, and one you can very likely expect. Chromatic Duel, proposed change, playpoint return on the Enhance effect, changed from 6 to 4. Chromatic Duel is another of the 3 of additions to Midrange Sword from this expansion. While not especially impactful as a 1 cost card, when enhanced, the value of Duel raises dramatically, basically becoming a free double card generation effect. With both produced followers sporting the commander tag and being very useful in different situations, it is not hard to see why a more aggressive deck that values tools that generate more proverbial steam would want to run this card. So how viable is this nerf? Personally, I'm in the apparently minority camp that doesn't feel that this card is especially busted. While it does feel somewhat strange to have a card that literally costs nothing and makes two other cards, I've always thought that the followers themselves are not that crazy. That said, nerfing this card gives us another opportunity for a precision nerf, the ability to reduce the overall power level of a top tier deck without directly hammering on their key legendaries, that being Arthur Knight King and Sky Fortress. The proposed change here also does address my main concern with the card, which is the lack of a cost when enhanced. I'm not too sure if a change of this nature will see the light of day, however, if Side Games does take the approach of avoiding Arthur and Sky Fortress, Chromatic Duel is an excellent candidate for the aforementioned precision nerf strategy, and they have shown to favor that in the past. Heavenly Knight, proposed change, stats changed from 3-7 to 3-5. Heavenly Knight is the other biggest piece of the popular Summit Havencraft deck, being second only to the deck's namesake card, Summit Temple. I've talked about this card previously, but the premise is simple. Under some very easy conditions, Heavenly Knight is basically a 7-7 ward and storm follower that costs 7 playpoints. This is obviously not exactly the most fair body. 
Clearly, setting up this situation requires the use of Summit Temple, so a common question would be, why not nerf Summit Temple instead? Well, we once again go back to the idea of precision nerfs, side game's favorite flavor of rebalancing. Summit Temple is the absolute core of a somewhat particular Haven deck. Yes, Heavenly Knight is its main win condition, but it is not that uncommon to win even without it, thanks to Haven's general predisposition towards backhand heavy followers. In fact, with Arch Priestess Lelia in the core set, it's pretty clear that Side Games has wanted this type of archetype to exist in Haven for some time, and with the addition of Summit Temple, they have only just managed to do so. With all that in mind, the reasoning behind targeting this card instead of Summit itself should be becoming clear. So how likely are we to see this actually happen? Despite all the reasoning in favor of it, I still think this change is a bit of a long shot. Not because it wouldn't be an excellent target for a nerf, it is again very close to an ideal precision nerf for the archetype, but because it would reduce Heavenly Knight's playability by an extreme amount. Yes, under Summit he would still basically be a 5-5 Storm follower, but without it he becomes an even more laughable 3-5 Storm during your turn, and a somewhat easy to trade into 7-5 Ward during your opponents, and this costs 7 play points? To reiterate, this nerf would be an almost ideal shakeup for the Summit archetype, however reducing Heavenly Knight's playability by such an extreme amount would warrant either the introduction of another card to take his place, something that is very possible with the upcoming additional card release, or a significant shift in playstyle which just may ruin the archetype's viability. I think it'd be really interesting to see this nerf, and I feel it would perfectly align with Psygame's precision nerf strategy. However, I feel that it may be slightly overambitious to expect a legendary nerf of this magnitude. Acceleration, proposed change, countdown changed from 3 to 2. Acceleration is at the core of the current midrange portal crafts game plan and strategy. It allows you to play a potentially unlimited amount of ancient or analyzing artifacts for free and have them immediately impact the board, helping you both generate extreme tempo and be aggressive with your other existing followers. If you've played any ladder this season, you've surely run into at least one Portalcraft player that ends up playing what feels like 10 artifacts in one turn, pays nothing for them, and completely obliterates your board. All the while drawing a bunch of cards and hitting your face with his other followers. It is pretty clear that this card, along with Deus Ex Machina, are the main driving forces behind both Portalcraft's current popularity and viability in the meta. So how viable is this very simple change? Surprisingly very. It has actually been established that Acceleration is the single biggest offender when it comes to Portalcraft feeling unfair at times, so it being the target of the upcoming rebalance patch is close to guaranteed. The question isn't so much will Acceleration be nerfed, as much as which nerf will Acceleration get, with this in an alternative proposition of removing the one playpoint refund on playing an artifact also being on the table. In summary, if you're wanting to get into Portalcraft, or have a bunch of spare acceleration copies you're thinking of violing, you may want to wait a few days. Wood of Brambles, Proposed Change, Effect Change to Only Work When Attacking. Ah, another countdown amulet that is at the core of a top tier midrange deck. In case it's not clear, Wood of Brambles is very much the tool that Forestcraft relies on to either win the early game or very strongly contest it. Even combined with simple fairies, this amulet allows you to very efficiently dispatch opposing low drop followers. It also inherently counters Portalcraft's main strategy, as both ancient and analyzing artifacts have one defense, and are unable to trade into followers if they are protected by Wood of Brambles. This singular fact has been the key to Midrange Forest establishing its position in the meta. So we've suggested addressing another problem board control amulet, Acceleration, by reducing its countdown before, however it's pretty clear that this approach cannot be applied here. So how viable is the current proposed change instead? Again, actually very. It does reduce the card's power level by an incredible amount, however, once again it fits into the category of a precision nerf, that is to say addressing a non-archetype creating card with a very targeted or specific change that doesn't completely shift its previous direction, but reduces viability in its currently most valuable scenarios. Personally, with the deck's extreme reliance on the card to win the early game, I feel that midrange force's place in the meta would be significantly compromised if this exact nerf were to be implemented. 
That said, it would fit Psygame's typical modus operandi and it wouldn't completely ruin the deck, so it is quite likely provided Forest is one of the affected crafts in the nerf. Word Wielder Ginger, proposed change, cost changed from 9 play points to 10 play points. Some of you may have never seen this card, and if that's you, you have my envy. Initially touted as an extreme meme, Word Wielder Ginger's confusing wall of text has actually been making the rounds in the current meta, though a lot of people haven't quite wised up to the archetype just yet. To quickly explain how this works, you drop Ginger on 9, and all your followers cost 0 this turn. They can't attack face, and no fanfares will trigger said turn as well. Once you pass, and your opponent passes back, it's all fair game for your newly created army. So why is this so powerful? Well, if you've played Dragoncraft in the past, you may remember these two, Israfil and Zeus. If you thought having one of these hit the board against you was annoying, try two or three at once. Yes, you do lose out on some of their benefits, namely Israfil's heal and Zeus's storm, but against most crafts, you are creating a basically unanswerable board that instantly kills them the following turn. Throw in Zeus's ward to protect you and the ability to evolve to combat the board, and you've got yourself a pretty easy win, provided you had all the pieces. As you might have guessed by that last part, this deck is very reliant on actually drawing into the right things. No ginger on turn 9? Sad story, bro. Three gingers and no Zeus or Israfil on turn 9? Sad story again. The deck does run an absurd amount of draw effects to combat this, and it utilizes a plethora of neutral synergy cards to not lose out on the early game, but it is still very reliant on having all the pieces on turn 9. This is where the proposed nerf comes in. Based on significant previous experience with late game win conditions, think Albert, Aisha, Jungle Warden, Sephira, and many others, people feel that having to play around or deal with these potential game enders on turn 10 is the baseline. Having Ginger coming down a turn prior and not only setting up a game winning board but also potentially being able to come down when under pressure, utilizing Zeus to both address the board and protect itself, has been what many attribute the deck's sudden rise to power to. So how likely are we to see this change? Generally it's about an even split. It's worth considering that while the deck has shown to be very powerful, it is very dependent on good draws and the support of other cards. Ginger's strong, but if Zeus and Israfil weren't around, it'd be far less potent. Excluding some of the deck's abundant draw effects would also likely send it back to meme status. Despite its great results, many still don't feel that the deck is tier 1, at least not when compared to Midrange Sword or Summit Havencraft. Finally, we have talked about the idea of precision nerfs at length previously and targeting the literal namesake of the archetype for a nerf, even with such a seemingly minor change, somewhat goes against that philosophy. With all that in mind, I would say that this change can only happen if two conditions are met. Number one, Cygames decides to address an unusually large amount of decks slash cards in order to really shake up the meta. While a very strong deck, I feel that Ginger is probably fourth or fifth on the list of things to be nerfed. Number two, Cygames cannot find another card in the archetype to nerf. Obviously nerfing Ginger directly would be a simple and definitive reduction in the archetype's power level, However, as mentioned previously, Cygames typically prefers to address the support cards that prop the archetype up. While I cannot currently see a singular outstanding candidate, making certain card draw or board control effects less efficient would be a significant hit to the deck. Provided both of these are the case, then yes, expect this change. Personally, even though I like the adjustment proposed here, I wouldn't hold my breath. So. That covers some of the more interesting ideas for changes I've seen for the upcoming Rebalance patch, but what about my own personal list? Well, let's quickly go over it. Archetypes extremely likely to see changes. Midrange Sword, Summit Haven, Midrange Portal. Not much to say here, all of these decks are considered tier 1 or close to tier 1 and are widely used both on the ladder and in the tournament scene. If you are playing one of these, brace for impact. Archetypes likely to see changes if they go the extra mile. Midrange Forest, Ginger Rune. Once again, these are decks that are considered either tier 1 or close to tier 1 and see wide application, however, I feel that they are significantly later on the proverbial chopping block than the archetypes in the previous categories, so they may end up dodging the nerf hammer. 
This is not to say I couldn't see some outlier changes like nerfing Aggro Blood's Old Blood King, uh, you know I would love that, but the aforementioned are far more clear targets. Cards extremely likely to see changes, Acceleration and Fatal Spellbomb slash Vols Magical Marksman. Not much to say, these two cards have been very particularly singled out by the community, so I would say they are nearly guaranteed to be affected by the change. Cards likely to see changes depending on what route they take. Uh, Chromatic Duel, Arthur Knight King, Sky Fortress, Summit Temple, Word Wilder Ginger, Wood of Brambles, Serene Hind, Sky Commander Celia, and Heavenly Knight. These are not sorted in any particular order, by the way. Uh, also, as a note, I'm not saying all of these will be changed, but rather that a combination of them are likely to be. Now, if we split up the possible changes into the precise nerf top row, meaning adjusting key support pieces, and direct nerf bottom row, meaning adjusting key main pieces, my personal views on these cards would be as follows. Firstly, I strongly feel that either Serene Hind or Heavenly Knight will be the card to take the proverbial bullet for Summit Havencraft. I do not believe Summit Temple itself will be changed. Celia and or Duel will be the precise nerf version for Sword, with Arthur or Sky Fortress being the more direct route. Honestly, both of these are about equally likely, however, as a principle, I would usually bet on precision nerfs, as I feel that is the approach Psy Games has taken most often in the past. Moving on, Word Wielder Ginger would be the direct nerf target for its namesake archetype. I feel it will end up being hit if they address this deck and cannot find a key support to tone down. Personally, I cannot currently think of an especially appealing precise nerf version for Ginger Rune. At the same time, I do not believe another direct nerf candidate exists for this archetype, as I strongly doubt a neutral card like Zeus or Israfil would ever be under consideration. Finally, Wood of Brambles is the precise nerf target for Midrange Forest, another deck I feel may slip under the radar, a uh, bigger fish to fry and all that. While the card borders on a direct nerf due to the archetype's extreme reliance on it, I believe it is the clearest target out of the bunch. It is, of course, very possible that another very key support card, one I cannot identify right now, is nerfed in its place, or a more direct approach is taken and side games ends up hitting... For example, the deck's main win condition in Jungle Warden. Only time will tell. These are all, of course, in addition to Acceleration and Fatal Spellbomb slash Vols Magical Marksman, which I already outlined as nearly guaranteed nerfs. There are tons more possible targets, especially if we delve a bit deeper into each archetype. Uh, Insect Lord, Airbound Barrage, Deus Ex Machina, Gawain of the Round Table, Jeweled Priestess, Gemstone Carapace, and so many more. The ones I've outlined here are simply the cards I feel are the most likely to see changes depending on what approach they take to rebalancing, precise or direct. Obviously, there are loads more suggestions. I feel that there are as many opinions about the rebalance patch as there are voices. So what do you think? Do you feel that the discussed changes would be good for the game and or agree with my shorthand list? Do you think I'm completely off and missing some super obvious archetypes that need to be toned down and clear changes to cards that the community has been drumming up forever? Let me know in the comments. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Lord and this has been Shadowverse. Thanks for watching.